SFT, 13B, DCT. back to Colette's S15 and she wanted AC when we started this project but the fact that that transmission is so freaking huge we have to literally cut out this completely out and where that is is your airbox blower motor and all those fancy things that make AC possible will no longer be there yeah so the we're gonna give ducts and all that stuff like that the blend doors the evaporator core all that stuff's kind of in our way, so. So we're gonna give her our own kind of AC and it's called windows down and go fast. All right, we got the interior all taken apart now so we have an idea of what we're cutting and we don't burn our carpet. Cricket Wait, over you here. don't wanna burn the carpet? Cricket doing cricket math over here. Figuring out how high we're gonna cut. We're gonna cut it all to start with, then fit the trans inside the car before we actually build the tunnel to make sure that everything's actually gonna fit where we want it to. That way we don't have to cut it twice or rebuild the trans tunnel. So if we have to cut more, we can always cut more. Always cut. Explain the people what you're doing. I'm drilling holes. Um, so I'm going to use a plasma cutter. We could use like a grinding disc or cutting disc to go through this on this side, but it'll shoot sparks all the way on the inside over there. So we're just going to drill the holes where we want our 45s to meet and basically just make an outline with the drill bit. And then I can go in there. I can see where the holes are and just connect the dots, make my line in there. And then we're going to teach Kyle how to use a plasma cutter. Yeah. Basically, it's going to be blasting from the inside this. of the car to the outside. Yeah. <laughs> So that's pretty much our shape that we got there. We measured out about 15 inches at the maximum width of where we need, which will taper back right to where the stock transmission cross member mounts go. Yeah. We know it's going to fit, and that way we still have the spot for our stock trans cross member and still keep the structure of the transmission tunnel. We'll end up hammering this down a little bit too after we come. Yeah, we got a little giddy with the hammer before. But, you know, we were trying to make it fit without having to do this, but that's obviously not an option. So in a graceful effort, um, managed to remove all the sound ending from the center portion of the trans tunnel. So while we're plasma cutting, we're not, you know, dying. So I'm just wiping off the rest of this glue. Then we can mark our lines. And then Colette's going to come in here and start blasting. Well, we're going to let her cut our own car apart. So the easiest way to do this, we found, everybody likes to do the whole dry ice thing, you know. You buy, you go out, you got to find it first, the pain in the ass. You know, then you got to throw it in there, and you got to wait, and then you got to beat the out of it with a hammer and it all cracks up. We use this little guy, map gas. So since nothing's in this car already, you just heat up this side. So while I was under here heating this up, Chris was in there scraping her with a flathead screwdriver. What do you use? Oh, uh, that's a gasket scraper, but basically just a wide flathead. This little guy. So, and look at how nice it comes out. Look at that. The glue is still attached to most of it. Yeah, see that? Nice and easy. They come out in huge pieces. And you know, one of these things is like $40 for this little guy with the gas, and they last forever. You can do a whole chassis with one of these, no problem. Heat up from underneath, and then have your homie up top scrape while you heat. It doesn't have to get super hot, just enough to let the glue melt a little bit, and then you just peel it. And it'll all peel up in one piece. How are we looking? Oh, that's good to me. Yeah, look at that. So we drilled our marks through here, here, here. I can see all of our holes. Now we're just going to connect the dots. So usually we do this stuff on our own, but in this build we have Colette working with us, collaborating, because she wants to learn how we do stuff and, you know, anything that she can pick up to do on her own for her next build. She's going to pick up a lot build. of bad habits. She's going to pick up a lot of bad habits. She's going to get some good ones, though. Yeah. Um, so we're good. doing this hand-in-hand -hand with her, teaching her all of our little tricks and tips, and you're going to get to learn them, too, because as we're teaching her them, you can learn them as well. Either on our channel or on Colette's channel, there's a little bit of both. I taught her how to TIG weld and MIG weld, and those will both be on her channel. So if you're just trying to figure out if you want to get into it, I have a how-to basically on how to TIG weld. And she learns how to do it within 20 minutes, probably 30 minutes. And she's already laying down nice beads, doing her own subframe. Just beat it. Just beat it. Be like Michael Jackson. Nice welds. You know, that was all her. All of her stitch welding. Which we talked her into doing something I didn't want to at first, well, but then Chris talked me into it too. We're going to do some spicy stuff for the engine bay because, you know, we yeah. have to look good. Yeah, and it's the, really the only thing we're working on in this car. It's getting full interior. We're not doing anything in there. Nothing in the trunk. So it's just engine, exhaust, intercooler stuff. So we have the engine bay to play with, and we're going to sauce it up. So Bryce, if you're watching this, I will be calling you multiple times. Make it match. So 
we have taught Colette how to plasma cut. In so doing, she got a little crazy with it. Yeah, we have a whole transom cut out now. Wheel wells cut out, and now we are making cardboard templates for tubbies. tubs. Tubby. No, we're not going to use trailer wheel fenders. Yeah, we're not using trailer fenders like everyone else. We're going to make our shit from scratch, and it's going to look phenomenal. Or it's going to look like shit. One or the other. You must find out. Got a lawnmower man outside, so I'm going to try and talk a little loud so you can hear me. But we have the first side of the wheel well um, taken care of. We just have to do the little roundy part and fill in the gap. We just got in this setup from OMD Parts. It comes with modified knuckles, bump stops removed, some big old wheel spacers, adjustable tension rods. They modify your sway bar for you to clear the angle kit. And this is essentially their version of what a um, power brake would do to reinforce the tension rod mounts and make a little lateral bar to go from one side to the other. You make your own power brace. I just pop the ball joints back in, stock lower control arm bushings, which we will likely change out. And we are going to test fit this before we weld in our arches, or at least finish weld in our arches on our tubs in the front. So that way we get a better idea of what it is we are working with. So that way we don't end up building the tubs and then because of the same scrub radius that this kit produces, um, we don't have to redo our wheel wells. So we are now on the hunt for some 17 by nine plus 15 wheels to try and test fit and put some tires on to see what we can do to try and make sure everything's okay. We know we're gonna have to beat the rear of the firewall. Hopefully we don't have to cut our anti-intrusion bars to gain more clearance back there because in the pictures it does look like they beat it pretty good. We're gonna find out. We cut out a lot more than uh, what we initially did before with Colette. Just took more out of this because we're replacing the whole thing. All that's going to be a lot more structural if corner hits and stuff like that happen. I mean, given there should be a certain amount of crumple zone, but these little sections here are made out of some really thin metal, and as you can see, they're just spot welded together. Now, I did get the angle kit put together, that OMD kit. Obviously, we will end up powder coating the lower control arms and the knuckles and stuff. We are just test fitting right now, so Colette's going to come over here with some wheels. We're going to put that on along with our giant spacer, and then we're going to swing this thing from lock to lock once our tie rods get here, and then I can actually see to make sure that we have enough clearance. And then now we just cut some more out. Yeah, exactly. So before we actually make the tub portion of the top here, I basically have the car slammed while the suspension's still drooping. I have the caster fully maxed out as well as the camber fully maxed out. So this is our worst case scenario, the closest it should theoretically ever get to the inside of the chassis. So if we clear here, regardless of alignment spec, we should be fine. We are obviously gonna have to do some hammering. Back here, all you S chassis boys know what's up with that. That little guy right there is gonna get knocked. The pinch weld back here is gonna get knocked. We're gonna relocate this brake bracket, but we'll do all that once we get the you know, tie rod on there so we actually see how much swing we get with the proper size wheel. So Cricket's gonna keep on grinding and I'm gonna Take these yeah. tie rods out. Yep, and then clean up and tax this side in to match that side. So when he's all done doing that stuff, we can actually test both sides and then weld it all in. Test both sides, my chassis. Well, we got our sweet Canadian hey, boy back in the house. Boy. Hello. Yes. So we uh, eyeballed out some toe on this thing. These are actually only 235s, while well, these profiles do make them look really meaty. So the offset on these wheels is 17 by 9 on a plus 22. Some of Adam's beautiful wheels from his E36. Closest thing we had to spec here, so with our cut notch as it was before, that's as far as she goes. Beautiful. We have the clearance. We're not yeah. hitting anything. We got lots of room to wiggle still. Now spin her back the other way. We're supposed to beat in over here. It ain't where the it's not where the anti-intrusion bars is above it. Grabbing a little bit? Yeah. Yep. Just on that. Well, I remember that the, the wheels recommended are also supposed to be a little bit yeah. further out. So where the anti-intrusion bar should be good, but there's a hump like it goes in right here. So we can just beat that up and it should be good. Yep. So sling it back. We do have actual clearance right now, which is crazy at full lock in the back there. Come on, focus. There she is. It's like one of Joe size wheels. You know, spin the wheel. Now fling it back the other way. That one's hitting the back of our wheel well already. So this one, it's touching right there. So this is all stuff in the instruction you said we had to beat out, but you know we haven't got to that portion yet. Our main concern right now is just the tubs, oh, which are right now. Yep. Oh, so, this one has that bump out right there where that hole is for the. Yep. Block that so we're off. gonna do some massaging, some beating. 
But the front portion clears so we can actually finish our tubs, which is sweet. Metal will be here tomorrow. We'll get that going. Cricket welded that in and in good fashion. Cricket grounded as well to sound too. You told me to do it, you jerk. Yeah. You want it nice and smooth, silky it's smooth. It's nice and smooth. Now we're just gonna make our little upper portions of the arches and then little filler plates for the side. And we're gonna throw a little design on there which you guys will get to see later. So while Chris is having a grand old time over here. You know, building wiring harnesses all the time and then just getting to hack one out of a car just feels so good. Originally we were gonna go with the stock chassis harness route, but there's a lot of the little stuff that was kind of burned on the roll cage and also a bunch of stuff that we're not gonna be using, like all the AC stuff. So we may as well just strip all this out and get rid of a bunch of weight since we're gonna be adding a little bit in the front. So speaking of adding a little bit of weight, we have our mock-up pieces. This is made out of thin stainless, so I can end up making twin ones for each side. I just ordered metal. I didn't have any, but I wanted to make it and mock it up and, you know, waste a little bit of stainless steel. And now I have them for the next time I ever want to do a S chassis. Tubs, which I won't, but we have it here. So what do you guys think? Not too bad. The next time you see this, this will be all be welded in with mild steel, not stainless steel. Grinded down, made smooth, and some sauce put into it. Now yeah, it's a little bit extra. Oh, we gotta church it up. We can and we have to. All of these were cut the same, just reverse, obviously. So everything else should match up. In a perfect world, they should be exactly the same. So here's the hoping. Yeah, base plates were exactly the same. Held them up against each other. They were matching. We couldn't tell the difference. So if I make these exactly the same, in a holy sh yeah, we don't need all that. So it was just going to be like a bolt-on build and like a motor swap is now turning into a whole lot more mustard. And I'm okay with that. We are definitely okay with that because you know us, we don't like boring builds. So we like to do things new every Get time. Sauce. Get saucy with it. So we're going to make some all sorts of sauce in this thing since we don't get to touch anything in there or back there. Just a body kit, which we didn't make. So, you know, it's nothing. So we have just this little section of sexiness. And that's all we need. We, we can work with that. So the boys over at Adam Shop have this cool triple wheel roller thing, which then the pieces that Cricket cut out, we ran through there and it makes it this nice, smooth radius, able to pick the parts we want to bend and the parts we don't want to bend. Just little magnets, we're gonna tack the bottom corners and the top section there, get it all level, and then we can build off our other little blocky blockies. Looking pretty cool so far. Coming together real nice, like I'm happy. So we were trying to figure out the proper type of sauce to put on here. So we made an attempt to make this cross pattern here. It's okay, my sweet boy. You can be in the video. You can be in it. So this now we try to make out of aluminum and it worked. So now we try to make it out of stainless and that also worked. So this is going to go right in there. And it's really just going to finish this engine bay off and it's yeah. going to be glorious. Yup. So we cut that down to size. But yeah. you love to see. That. Definitely that. So we've been slacking on filming a little bit, mostly just because we got excited. Yeah, we were doing sweet, saucy things, and Colette was filming as well, so it'll be either be here or there. Tubs are in, Smooth inserts, so you can kind of see what's going on with the patterns underneath there, I'm sure we showed you before. These corners here have now been molded in, some high temp silicone stuff that's also paintable. Inside sealed as well, just waiting for the silicone on the outside to dry. Just got some primer on there so it doesn't rust while we're doing other stuff. But yeah, we're getting there. We are still waiting on an oil pan for that turd over there. Got it, That thing right there, yeah. This oil pan shows up and also the 12A engine cover that we need to mount our cool little engine brace thing that's gonna go on the front, engine plate it. Next part of our process is we have all these unused holes on the firewall. So we're gonna go ahead and have Cricket tack weld them Johnnies up. He cut a bunch of pretty circles for us to cover up all these things with. And then a little primer on that as well. And then Ideally, we'll have our oil pan, our engine plate, then our we can start doing mock front stuff. cover, and all that stuff. And then we can actually put this thing in here. And then put our Vibrant order in. Yeah. 
Cause then order a whole bunch of the goods. Well, that's been bugging us for a vibrant order, but we have no idea what we need until we vibrant. actually get vibrant. It's a vibrant thing. The good stuff. Then we can figure out what we need for fuel lines, hoses, intercooler piping, exhaust stuff, which now, because the exhaust is on this side, whereas the factory one is on that side, we're going to have to figure all that out. Yeah, there's not but, much room with that steering shaft right there. Well, it sucks that we don't have all the parts we need to put this stuff together, but it gives us the opportunity to church all this stuff up and make it look really cool. So, yeah. this is all going to get primered here as soon as my silicone cures, but, you know. Hurry up. Yeah, I'm getting impatient, too. I'm about to just spray just this Just spray shit. over it. We've got this thing stuffed in here. So, we Again. got the, um, yeah, fourth time. Fourth time in and out. So, we got our cradle supporting, and we are just trying to kind of eyeball and ballpark to see if our transmission tunnel clearance is going to be enough. Still sits at kind of a rear world weird tilt, but we have pretty good clearance throughout. We may end up having to cut the top section here just a little bit more just to try and figure out exactly what our driveline angle is going to be because of how high this engine has to sit and in turn how high it makes the transmission have to sit. Yeah, we got our handy dandy ratchet strap holding the back of the trans up now and our engine cradle holding the front of it up. Shout out to LZMFG for the ratchet strap that I stole off their golf cart. Yayo! First boy. Yup. So something cool happened on a Monday. We got a front engine cover. The right one that actually still has the studs and threaded holes for it. So right now, Chris is currently working on a new engine plate. And why is that, Chris? Well, pictures can be deceiving, and this and the pictures look like a lot it'd be wide enough to span across the engine bay. We also looked at like three or four different models of these um, engine plates, and this one seemed to be the only one that they made in the United States after test fitting it in the engine bay. You can definitely see why we don't want to use it, because we're going to have to build pedestals out like a foot from the fairing rails. So yeah, you don't want something cool. built all the way out to here, you know, then it takes away. Well, it's going to look, one, stupid, and then two, it's going to get in the way of stuff. So Chris right now is making one that's actually going to come from here and go up at an angle and then over here and stop here. And what we're going to do is going to make a little pedestal right here for the original bushings for the engine mount to sit on. That way it's not solid mounted, so it'll have a little bit of give. We'll do that on both sides. So right now Chris is just making up a plate out of cardboard and we will end up cutting it out of quarter inch and then doing some reinforcements because that looks a little thicker. Maybe not. Um, I have quarter inch. We'll see if my hypertherm plasma cutter can cut through that nice and sweet. Might run a few duty cycles. Yeah. So yeah, we're making an engine plate. Pretty cool. We haven't done this either yet. So we're doing a lot of new stuff on this car. You know, obviously we've never done anything like this before. We've never done anything like that before either. So it's a... Spicy meatball. Spicy meat the ball. Yeah, what Chris said. Alrighty, he has his V2 plate in. And as you can see, we bent out these little ears just to give it more room for the alternator. And then also give it a little bit more structure. And right now he's cutting the base plate for it, which is gonna go across here. And then it's gonna angle up. And we're gonna make this angle a little steeper and then make it to where these can sit on there. And then also onto the pedestal that I'm gonna make right there. He makes 3D models, folks. He tapes it all together and then I have to dissect it all. Luckily he's not using forever tape anymore. We had this point in time where we were using this rubberized tape because it was all we had. I mean, it was nope. great until you had to take it off. Yeah. Hence the name forever tape. Uh, yes. So for all of your concerns about this thing not being structural enough, this will have plenty of meat on the bone. Make it out of something thick, something properly sized. Quarter inch, Johnny's. Yeah. Centered pretty well, though. Yeah. Chris yeah. just pointed out something real nice, like... This is the mount bracket that they sent us with the adapter plate. I believe it's meant for, like, an FD or something. But um, this, actually, these are our four volts for our trans cross member. So this should be nice and <laughs> easy to make. Yeah. Well, that's Back lovely. Well, in classic cardboard fashion, we're going to get the plasma cutter going, clean up some slag, and then make our marks for our bendy bendies. So we 
we finally got our delivery. Marmoroso front sump pan. It's all beautiful BMW, six and a half quart, whatever. We're gonna make it fit. Right now there's no sump in there or anything like that because this again is just our mock-up motor. But I can at least put the pan where it's supposed to go. So we can finalize our engine mount stuff. There's something in there that's in my way. Huh. Yeah, again, new to all this rotary stuff. I mean, from here it looks really promising. In terms of clearance? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, we took all the measurements beforehand. Oh, they offered all the measurements? And yeah, we found all the stuff online. Good thing about Moroso, they're pretty nice about handing out all of the info. We taught Chris how to weld a long time ago, it's but been it's been a long time, like three years, I think. So we're on the back side of doing this engine plate. So it's like, hey, why don't you come over and uh, lay down some dimes for me? I don't know about dimes, but I'll lay something down, that's for sure. I was just using that as an armrest. Chris makes out of cardboard, I turn into metal, and we make dreams come true. And now we, we have it. We are the music makers. We're not allowed to play music though because of copyright laws and BS YouTube stuff. But you can imagine what we listen to on a daily basis. Question of the day What do you think we listen to while working? I don't great. think there's pretty really like a wrong answer. I was about to say, pretty much every answer is going to be correct. Yeah, we listen to everything. We listen from country to blues to disco to yeah. funk. He doesn't like the country part. I do that when he's on lunch break. But everything, except for like that new age trap music. That doesn't do much for me. You listen to drug dealer music, not yeah, drug user drug music. Dealer. Yeah, not drug user music. It's different. That's the difference. Yeah, we're we about that money and race cars. It takes money. That's a really nice cars. trans cross member. It's really crooked. <laughs> hey, that's what do you get from making it out of cardboard? No, I mean, it's just because one side's higher than the other and we flat plated it to reinforce it, so it looks kind of wonky. But don't worry, its purpose is still there. Yeah, BMW, none of them are square. None of these are ever, the angles are right. But you can't see it because it's tucked in the pocket. Yeah. Really sweet LZMFG ratchet straps available at uh, LZMFG.com. I don't know how much they are because I technically stole this one, but they're really sweet. Game on. Nothing moved. Look at that. The engine's in on its own. No ratchet straps, no holdy holdies. She's gonna bring us over an alternator and a turbo manifold so we can check clearance. That's exciting. Ooh.
So this is uh, the framework, the three quarter inch round stock. I don't know the wall thickness, but the half inch just had really small wall thickness. We didn't like it. So now that this is all, these will hammer in and those all run halfway up the pipe as well as the rest of our firewall is all halfway through the pipe. So we are low on argons. So we are just tacking everything into place currently. Craig is doing a great job. Hey, thanks. And we're also just tacking it in place because we're going to make Colette weld the whole thing in. Oh, yeah, she's going to have fun with uh -huh. that. She's going to do a lot of welding, a lot of burning, a lot of cuss words. But, yeah, it's yeah, nice and square and beautiful. And now we're going to make our bars that go back to the existing double layered portion of the trans tunnel back yonder. And then I will cardboard some things together. It's starting, it's starting to come together. Ta da! We're currently boxing in the trans tunnel. So we have our outline made of all the three quarter inch. So now we're filling in the difference. Chris ended up taping these up for me to make them fit really nice so we could get our angles for it. Basically did that so it would end here so it'd have a nice smooth run. And all I did was measure how long the distance was from where it touched the base to where it touched the three quarter inch up there. And then I measured the distance between this and this to be able to get the angle that I needed. So it was two and three quarter inches between where it's three quarters inch thick and where it ended up at. So I had to take and measure two and three quarter inches from here to here, cut a line on that, and then it fits nice and flush. This is so cool. I've, I've never seen this process before. It was really hard for me to imagine, at least the outline of where it's cut from the firewall. It was hard for me to imagine what that would look like yeah. with, with this material, but that's awesome. And what's going around it, you said, is even thicker than OEM. It's, so it's thicker than OEM. It's um, 16 gauge steel, uh, mild steel. We could have went with a little thick, uh, thinner stuff because it's only, I think it's 20 gauge is what they use for 240s. Might even be thinner than that. You can literally take and bend it with your fingers. That's how paper thin 240 yeah, is. You can see the size of the trans tunnel. Yeah. I can just flex that with my fingers. So it's really, really thin stuff. The stuff that we're going to put on here, you can't do that with. So it'll be more structured. Not that you really need it, but we're going to do it anyways. And we're going to seal it all up to make everything, you know, sealed off the firewall containing fire. Yeah, it's a wall good. of fire. Yeah, it blocks the wall. And I'm still being a um, arrive and drive welder princess because Cricket and Chris have been measuring and cutting and getting it exact. And um, yeah, I'm just in a. You get your work cut out for you today. <laughs> what? So you get your work cut out for you today. What yeah. do you mean? Why you are you got a lot of welding to do. You got a lot of welding, and I'm going to make you grind all the spots that you need to weld over right. here. So I'll let you grind a little bit. Not too much, you know. I don't have that much flapper disc left. I'm going to conserve that. Yeah. Yeah, there's a structure, and then I can start doing cardboard things. Yeah, buddy. And we know that the bars are straight, so that makes my cardboard very easy to cut. <laughs> Instead of weird contours like we dealt with before. It's like a whole lot easier. So we have successfully boxed in the trans tunnel. And Chris is currently okay. making some cardboard templates for me. And it's not finished welded. We're going to leave that to Colette. Because she wants to weld a bunch. So we're gonna let her weld a bunch. Before Boxing it gets all in. really hot from welding, then um, I'll do this now. Yeah, and then I can cut and grind. Yeah, while she's doing that stuff, you can make these things. We can bead roll and do all of our... We made a thing. Wow. Bob over here welding. Little beady boys, you know, like to church it up. Very so nice. So that plate is gonna go... Oh, let me get a view. Right on the side there. Oh yeah. Yup, love to see it. Go up more towards the corner. More Sorry. The corner? Yeah. Jake filling holes today. I see you're using. We got our trans tunnel almost buttoned up, and we're just finished welding it, tying it all in, and then we're gonna grind it down, paint it, make it look pretty, and then cover it up with carpet. Yeah. And now I got the fine adjustment tool. Yeah, we uh, we're clearancing some things. And then uh, we're gonna grind down some of this stuff here, make this all look smooth in one piece. Because the inside's grinded, except for this last part that we're using a little port. It's gonna be nice and smooth. It's gonna be a real sleek look. It's gonna look like a nice one piece tunnel. You won't even be able to see the bars in it, except from you the inside. You won't be able to see any of it, because it's gonna be covered by carpet. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> we'll to know show the goods. You gotta show the goods.
This is part of that fancy angle kit. Yeah. That part with that subframe in it, but the motor and transmission are magically. This is the stuff we didn't get to record yesterday. It was making our cover plate for our engine plate and finishing our trans tunnel. Yeah, I saw you guys painted it. Yeah, I primed it just so it doesn't rest. But she's in there. She looks good, and she clears, which is very important. Yeah, it's above the frame rails. You know, unlike the E92, that was below the frame rail. But what we're working on now is our angle kit from this guy came with these reinforcements. I go in here to re-support your tension rods. Our tension rod mounts are a little bit bent, so Cricket's gonna hammer these Johnny straight, put that on, and as well as this side. Maybe the other side, I don't know. So Colette brought over some intake manifold stuff. Who makes this? <laughs> Elite. Read the branding, oh. my dude. <laughs> um, actually, Mike just connected me with them, and they're relaunching their store, and we're going to be having their parts on our website as well. Drift Whoa. HQ. Whoa. So, yeah. I'm excited to get this on. It looks a lot better. It's much better design than, like, the stock Cosmo one. If you put this side by side, a stock one, it's just a lot messier, <clears throat> and the flow is better on this, too. So, so I'm excited to have my first one too. going on the S15. Yeah, I saw Jimmy has one. Yeah. Oh he just finished his uh, rotary yeah, build. Better, like you said, but He's still working on it. Okay. It's almost done. <laughs> <laughs> I know, at first I was trying to get mine done before him, and then we had to leave and live in Vegas for a month, so. Oh, well, yeah, that. He caught up to me. But no, I'm super stoked to have this on the S15. It's going to be very, very nice. And it will get powder coated. I asked them to not powder coat it so that we can do something crazy. So we went over doing the engine plate and we got this nice fresh sauce on the front just to cover up the four bolt holes that were there because for some reason this isn't even. So the four bolt holes are bolts that go onto the front of the cover. They don't line up with the center of the engine. So anything you put there would look, it would just look weird. So we just covered it up, made it a little bit stronger too. We added some more reinforcement tabs to it. Did that, it's nice and strong. It even stood up to Colette jumping on it and sitting on it for over an hour talking. We don't have our spacer in for our intake manifold, but they told us it's a 5 8 spacer. So I stuck five eighth inch plates of steel together and bolted it down. So now we can see our clearance for our starter. So we're waiting on the um, electronic throttle body to come through or the drive-by wire throttle body for this. We have to order things to make a manifold that hasn't been gone over anywhere either yet. Trans cross member and the trans tunnel turned out really good. We talked about how to weld a lot on that and we also taught her how to grind because there was a lot of grinding to do. After um, she welded, she ended up working later than us one day and it turned out really great. It's all primered. Chris put the um, RTV around it, siliconed it, everything so it is nice and sealed. We even bead rolled it for no reason whatsoever besides um, it was nice to show her how to use a bead roller. The bead rolling and everything is on Colette's channel. If you haven't gone over to watch the video over there, she also has videos on her YouTube of the build process and different angles, different um, parts of the build that we might not showcase here will be on her channel. So go ahead, go over there, give her a like, subscribe and a follow as well. And make sure to comment, tell Chris that he did a great job this time. Thank you guys for letting me know that I'm doing a great job, but we also need to let Chris know that he's doing I it. I did a little bit of welding. He did, oh, he, did, he did welding, and he not just welded, he put down some nice beads, too. So what we're going to see in the next video is probably going to be, I have no clue. Chris. Oh, you know what's going to be in the next video? It's going to be this. Plumbing. Well, Hold on. Let me take this off. I don't want you to give you any bad ideas. Like, we cut the whole ass end of Savio's car off. Because he had too much junk in the trunk. And he seems to love to hit everyone, and everyone hits him. So we just got less of the car to deal with. I chiseled all the Bondo off. Oh my god. Yes. Look at the Bondo. Stay tuned. This is going to be sweet. We'll get to show you all the cool stuff that we did to this car, because we didn't actually get a full build series on this. So while we're going over this car and refurbishing it for Hyperfest, hope to see you guys there, by the way. Um, we'll show you all of the cool stuff that we did to this chassis, because if you didn't watch the video, um, we have a build on this, but it's a really short video, so we'll go over all the cool stuff. Like, subscribe, comment, say hi to Jim. <laughs>